poets, geniuses, and artists often have gleams of true recollection. But yet their awareness is often fleeting, unbalanced, and uncoordinated with the whole. It is only the sages and mystics who become that memory and thus are consciously, calmly, and clearly aware of being their self, and thus forever free both of the dis-ease of becoming and the urge to assert and explain. Serenely they radiate, free from ideals, enthusing, and efforting. They are rid of duty complex, fear, and hope, Expectation is in itself bondage, and neither vivid intensity nor showy vitality are modes of wisdom or of awareness. In our timeless moments of eternity, we simply are still and aware beyond both wisdom and ignorance The sleeping, dreaming, and waking states are but modes passing before the self. Playing as egos, we are such stuff as dreams are made of, and our little life as ego is rounded with a sleep, the healing sleep that we call death. All the mystic poets in all ages have stuttered their intimation of true memory, and in gleams of self-awareness, their thought, though ego-born, became winged and fragrant with this true memory. But though their art was the helper, art often became the bar. The search for fossil expressions and trained tricks would often become a new bondage. Wordsworth speaks of memory when he writes, In such access of mind, in such high hour, of visitation from the living God, thought was not. In enjoyment, it expired. No thanks, he breathed. He proffered no request. Wrapped into still communion that transcends the imperfect offices of prayer and praise. But elsewhere, Wordsworth is very wordy and ever trying to recapture this memory that precedes ego consciousness. He often seems to be trying laboriously to go beyond thought, beyond rapture, beyond ego consciousness, and to be where being is free and efforts are stilled. The whole does not enthuse. In the unitive mode of experiencing, There is a sense of completion, of unbroken perfection, and of achievement without doing. To a mind that is still, the whole universe surrenders, simply, untryingly, and livingly. We can reflect and know ourself as more than all these universes. Percy Shelley shrieked in ecstasy, and so do many emotional saints and sickly geniuses. In mystic visitations, friends do quake and novices agitate. It is an error to try to tell others about our mystic experiences, and even worse, to be solemn about them by giving long-winded, muddled explanations Wise is the person who follows Blake's warning when he writes, 
Never seek to tell thy love. Love that never told can be. For the gentle wind does move silently, invisibly. I told my love. I told my love. I told her all my heart, trembling, cold, in ghastly fears. Ah, she doth depart. Similarly, our deepest joy, our richest awareness, is too real for telling, for tears, or even for thought. It never can be told in words, nor conveyed to anybody who does not already know it livingly. Trying to tell about it may help to clarify the experience to one's own self, one's ego consciousness, but it will shortly become apparent how it is impossible to explain what happened to others. What have other egos and intellects to do with it? They only wriggle and twist thoughts, for they do not like to die, to be expunged, to be mutated, or to be exposed to the invisible sun of being, the invisible reality, which is glibly called God. Better to have no need to clarify the illusory intellect and the equally illusory ego. Better to have no urge to understand what has been experienced livingly. And better to heal our dis-ease of wordiness and be what we are. We can tell our truth in the language which seems to be silence because it is full beyond words. The mystic life awareness will tell itself effortlessly. Our trying is fatal, futile, and blurring. Silence intuits and many pilgrims know and share in this eloquent language. One is never lonely or lonesome when one is alone in all oneness. John Keats may tease us out of thought as doth eternity, and Willie Shakespeare may confirm that There is nothing either good or bad, but thinking makes it so. But how few have consciously, steadily, and calmly been aware of eternity in the here and now? How few have had a glimpse of being free of time, thought, and desire, thereby experiencing directly the living silence of being. Until that moment, they can only have a stunted and truncated vision of their self. How few have solved the paradox or antimony of imminence and transcendence through the direct experience of mystic consummation. Thought was not, and there shall be no more time. What do such phrases and poetic lies convey to fellow pilgrims who have not consciously been their self beyond thought, beyond time, and beyond efforting? Is ego transcendence the goal? Do we know it experientially, or do we merely profess its virtues? Out of one's thought, out of one's mind, out of the bonds of time and space, yet including these, 
It must appear to be a demented state of affairs, a vacuum, a cessation of all that seems good and sensible to egos. Though they themselves do queer things in order to pass away the time. But where can time be passed? And where are we ourselves off to in the procession of assertively strutting egos? As it was written in Measure to Measure, but man, proud man, dressed in a little brief authority, most ignorant of what he's most assured, his glossy essence, like an angry ape, plays such fantastic tricks before high heaven as make the angels weep. More likely, the angels are laughing. Time passes. Time says men pass. Whence? Whither? All illusions pass. Whither are we all progressing in such a vital hurry? What are egos becoming? Super egos? Can they transcend ego consciousness into awareness? If we are sincere pilgrims of eternity with queer mystic urges and strange true memory, why not enter the awareness of the eternal now immediately, this very moment? As William Blake pointed out, it is all so simple. To see a world in a grain of sand and heaven in a wildflower, hold infinity in the palm of your hand and eternity in an hour. Without desire, it is possible to still the streams of thought the waves of the mind. Then enter effortlessly and harmoniously, free of qualities or ego hues, without masks or disguises, into the radiant dark light of wholeness, of living ease, of rich silence. In the steady light of our intuition, we can move lightly and learn to freely wing our way. We can go beyond ego delusions and diseased tools. Once we know livingly and simply that they are not who we are, all in the fullness of time, now and here.